I could start with uh, Mr. Laurent. So what sort of challenges, first of all, to put this all into context, what kind of challenges do people in Haiti now face on a regular basis just to get through the day? The, the immediate challenge is security challenge. Um, the, the, the security situation is dire. We are experiencing sort of a, uh, an urban guerrilla warfare happening with the gangs just taking over control of, of the capital. 75% of the capital is, is controlled by gangs. And, and mainly eight main warlords are, are the ones creating you know, chaos and havoc in Haiti today. The police is very weak, under-equipped, understaffed, and not very motivated. And basically, the situation is that the, that the gangs are, are ruling the field. They're calling the shots. Hospitals are closed or, or are closing. Uh, it's a very difficult to get fuel across. And, and, and the fuel that does get across is, uh, is being sold at you know, between $25 to $35 US per gallon. So this is creating a perfect storm. And, uh, and on top of that, the president, uh, Jovenel Moïse, who was brutally assassinated last year, there is still no answers about his assassination. And we still don't know who financed and who was behind the assassination. Laurent, who arms and funds these gangs? I think it's a multiple stream of, of, of funding. Uh, one of it is, is, is simply kidnappings. Haiti has experienced over 1,500 kidnappings in the past 18 months, approximately. And, uh, and, and basically, this activity has gotten over $31 million to the gang at simply an average of $20,000 per ransom per victim. So if you calculate it, that, that makes you $31 million. And in a country like Haiti, $31 million is a huge sum. So that's that's certainly one. They have, uh, you know, funders uh, outside of Haiti. They have funders also in Haiti. Um, and, and, and interestingly enough, there was a, a church that was involved also in, in, in weapon smuggling and that uh, some of the head of that church are currently in jail, the Episcopal Church. Right. And, and on top of that, you have a, a, a fuel contraband that, that the gangs are doing that, that is, you know, earning them a whole lot of revenue. So you have a, you have a host of different revenue streams. And, and this is why it's important to have, you know, to support the police within an international um, task force, an international anti-gang force to come in and, and rescue and I would say liberate the people from the from, from the from gangs, gangs, which are all right. Let's... Would it be a sensible idea to send in an international intervention force before there is a government that has some legitimacy in the eyes of the Haitians? The current administration, you know, the prime minister, he wasn't elected. He's delayed elections. He's disbanded the Electoral Council. Aren't a lot of Haitians going to see his call for an international force to come into the country, that invitation itself not to be legitimate? Well, this is this is the situation right now, and that's why it's a very complicated situation because because the the, the current prime minister is not legitimate, and he was basically he, he extended his mandate. Um, the mandate that he had was basically was pretty clear, um, and he had four months to do it. And right now we're at month fifteen, so so that that that, that complicates the situation even more. So the magic one of sending uh, an international anti-gang force is alone is not going to solve the problem. It's going to have to be a long-term approach, certainly um, humanitarian aid package, you know, to assist, uh, to assist with, the immediate, with the immediate social crisis that, that's going to unfold from this. Mm -hmm. um, but Laurent, does that become the mission then of an international force? Does it go in there? Where does it end? What's the scope? Is it simply to you know, disarm the gangs, or well, does it turn into really administering and running Haiti? The number one priority will be to disarm the gang and to bring back security, because without security, nothing else works. People cannot get out of their house. People cannot work. Uh, you know, Caracol Park is laying, off, is, is laying off its workers because they cannot open. There is no fuel in the country. So the country is grinding to a halt. 
So everything is stopped. So the number one priority is going to be to restore security and to, to allow people to get back to, to their lives. Now, parallel to this, you need to fix the, the political situation through elections once the security is restored, because this government is a provisional government that's there, and, and it hasn't really done much to, to organize elections, like, as you mentioned before. So the, the, the country is, is, is basically at a, at a standstill politically, as well as socially, so you know it's it's not an easy situation to solve. Right. But it starts. Let, let me jump with in restoring here. Restoring security. You said yeah. somebody, uh, Laurent, at the beginning. You said you supported the idea of a foreign intervention. There is a question there. How much confidence do you have in the desire, the interest of some of the international powers that are talking about intervening, that they are actually interested in some of the bigger picture things you were mentioning? Because at the end of the day. We're talking about an international community or, or powers in the international community that have been criticized for looking the other way while Ariel Henry dismissed a chief prosecutor in September after the prosecutor sought to charge him in connection with the assassination of Jovenel Moise, replaced the country's justice minister, dissolved the council organizing elections. Do you really have a lot of confidence that a foreign force is going to be really concerned with restoring all of these issues? Well, that's why it's important not to repeat the mistakes of the past. Mm. Uh, Haiti has, been, has seen its share of international intervention, of multinational forces, of UN forces, uh, several forms of UN forces. And that's why this time around, it's important to get it right. Um, and Haiti, um, security-wise, has never been at such a situation. I mean, for the past few years, Haiti has worked actively at disarming, disequipping, and equipping the police, and and the gangs have been, you know, arming themselves. And as I said, Port-au-Prince today and Haiti in general has the highest per capita kidnapping ratio in the world. So this is a perfect storm. And you know, where do you start? So you start number one by restoring some sense of security for people to go about you know their right. lives so that's that's the number one step right that's the number one step so now politically politically the current government that's there we we all know that it's it's an illegitimate government and cannot and, and doesn't have i would say um, a lot of you know, too much future right 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 for okay. sure so and, and that's why that's why all this has to collide to giving the people a voice. Once security is restored, then the people should have the voice to elect their leader. All right. And it let's, should not be let's done. Let's end on that point. That's a positive. Giving people.